I'm Larry Walther, and this is PrinciplesofAccounting.com, Chapter 5. In this particular module, we will now look at enhancements to the income statement for a merchandising business. First of all, consider that companies may divide their expense items according to their nature. Rather than just having operating expenses that consist of rent and salaries, they may further divide into categories of selling expenses, general administrative costs, providing far more detail about the character of the expense expenses that are being incurred. We may also separately show peripheral transactions such as land sold at a gain, uh, things that are separately reported from ongoing revenues and expenses. Financing costs such as interest expense may be broken out uh, so that we can see the difference between operating performance and the cost of operating the business. And taxes as well may be shown in a separate category. Uh, this gives rise oftentimes to a presentation that we simply call a multiple step income statement where we divide business operating results into separate categories. Presumably this uh, simplifies the ability to understand the intricacies of a business's operations. So here's an example for Hunter Company of a multiple step income statement. And first note the category for sales. Sales with potentially a great deal of detail showing the reductions for the sales discounts and sales returns arriving at the net sales. Uh, the cost of goods sold category is far more complex. It consists of the beginning inventory plus the net purchases and the net purchases themselves might be calculated including the purchases plus freight cost minus purchase returns and allowances and discounts and adjusted for the ending inventory balance. Uh, so the calculation of cost of goods sold can become fairly complex. The net sales minus the cost of goods sold gives gross profit from which we subtract our selling expenses and our administrative expenses. Uh, we have our other items like land sale down in this particular item. We have our interest expense shown down below. And then we come down and show our income tax and finally our net income. So you can see this can become a fairly involved presentation of income, but certainly the detail provided within gives a great sense about what's going on in the business, how their profits or losses are being generated, what are the contributing factors. A single step income statement is a simpler presentation. Uh, it may be more useful in terms of allowing a, a novice financial statement user to see exactly the, really the bottom line effects by categories. We put all revenues and gains together, uh, we group all of our expenses together, and we subtract one from the other to arrive at net income. However, when you look at a simple presentation or a single step income statement, one needs to be very careful. Uh, the bottom line net income that most people focus on may not be fully revealing the, the nature of the operations. You may not be able to fully discern the components that make up operations, what's core and ongoing, and what's maybe a, a, an incidental or non-recurring type event. So great care needs to be taken in interpreting a single step income statement. Here's an example of a single step income statement. I'm simply showing net sales in this case. I've compressed the detail and I'm subtracting the expenses. I did go ahead and break out the income tax showing it separately before I came to the net income. This is also for Hunter Company. If you look in your textbook, you'll find both of these illustrated in the book. Uh, it's the same set of facts just presented in a, in a slightly different fashion. Multiple step versus single step presentation. Now, a detailed income statement does provide the opportunity to do some analysis to evaluate trends uh, to provide various sub calculations and ratios. So I'm showing here a calculation of what we call a gross profit margin. It's simply the gross profit divided by the net sales. Uh, Hunter Company's gross profit was 370,000. Their net sales was 653,000. So they had a 56.66 percent gross profit margin. The net profit looks at the bottom line of the company, the net income of 39,000 divided by the sales, the net sales, and they say, so they have almost a 6% net profit on sales uh, ratio or margin. In closing, I would like to point out that there are some global issues to consider in looking at an income statement. Recognize uh, that in many countries, uh, revenue is referred to as turnover, so that's, that's a bit of a difference in terminology. It essentially means the same thing. Uh, international reporting standards in general do not prescribe a detailed format for the income statement. Uh, expenses are oftentimes classified according to either their nature, such as utilities, salaries, advertising, and so on, or they can be classified the same set of expenses reclassified according to their functional areas, such as manufacturing, administrative, or sales. Supplemental disclosures usually provide additional detail about the nature of costs. Global accounting rules tend to be more permissive than USA rules when recording gains and losses on changes in value of long-term assets. So uh, uh, an international company's income statement might have 
additional line items reflecting revaluations of property, plant, and equipment assets that are not presently recognized under U.S. GAAP. And the company needs to prepare an additional statement that reconciles net, net income to these broader concepts of income.